Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and in this video I want to talk about this synthesis. So here we are starting with the alkyne, where the triple bond is in the middle of the molecule, and we need to synthesize this compound, and the first thing that jumps at me right away, that we don't have a structure of our compound, we only have the name, and the name includes a specific stereochemistry, we know that we need to start with the mesa compound here. So let's first of all draw our molecule and go from there. Well, I have the hexane diol, which means that that is going to be a molecule with six carbons, and we're going to have an alcohol group at the carbons three and four. Well, let's draw that one, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, like that, then my carbons three and four are going to be these two, and I will have to put my alcohols there. For right now, I will just put my alcohols without any stereochemistry, just to finish my structure like that. Now, in order to be a mesa compound, my molecule needs to be superimposable with its own mirror image. If it is difficult to imagine how this molecule should look right away, well, we can draw a couple of versions and see if that's going to be a mesa compound or not. First, let's try to draw this molecule with both OH groups looking at us. In this case, I'm going to get something that looks like this, I have OH over here, and I have OH over there, like that. Is that a mesa compound? Well, let's see. If it is a mesa compound, it means that it should be superimposable with its own mirror image. So I'm going to draw the mirror image where the OH looks over here, and the other OH is there, and my dotted line over here, that is my plane of mirror. And looking at this molecule, no, that is not a mesa compound, because the two uh, reflections that I have over here, these two molecules, they're non-superimposable in space, and as a matter of fact, they are enantiomers. So that option doesn't work. Well, what about the other option in which my OH groups are going to be looking in different directions. So let's say one OH group is looking at me and another OH is looking away from me like that. Would that be a mesa compound? Well, if I take this molecule and do a mere reflection of that and then just rotate this molecule in space, they are going to be superimposable, so option two is indeed the mesa compound. It can be a little bit difficult to see how exactly these molecules are superimposable in space, so maybe if you're having some trouble there, uh, try to build the uh, last two structures that I have here with your molecular model kit and physically rotate those in space to see whether you are going to be able to superimpose them or not. And I can guarantee that you will be able to superimpose those molecules in space. Also, uh, in my video on mesa compounds, I do talk about the different types of rotations in molecules in space, so you can check that one out as well and try to rotate this molecule in space without building the molecular model kit's uh, version of that. Now, let's clean it up a little bit so I have some space to work with and then we'll go to our synthesis. So now, when I know what exactly I need to synthesize, I'm going to start doing my retrosynthetic analysis. And when it comes to the retrosynthetic analysis, we're always going to start at the very end at our target molecule. So this is my target molecule over here, and from this point I'm going to slowly go towards my starting material. And the very first thing that comes to mind here is, well, I have a molecule with two OH groups, so how exactly am I going to add those two OH groups to my molecule? We know a few different reactions. We know one reaction that's going to be a dihydroxylation with osmium oxide or a potassium permanganate or something like that. When it comes to the dihydroxylation reactions like that, we also know that that reaction is a strict syn addition. So both OH groups would end up on the same side of our molecule. What I have in my target molecule here is that my OHs are looking in different directions. However, due to the fact that I do have free rotation around single bonds, I can easily rotate my uh, molecule around a single bond in the middle and still have my OHs looking in the same direction. So if I were to rotate my molecule around a middle bond, I can redraw it as something like this, where both OH groups, one OH, and the second OH are looking at me. Now we can also see that there is a plane of symmetry here, so this is definitely a mesa compound. So if I'm doing a syn dihydroxylation over here, that means that my starting material should be a double bond 
and in this particular case that would be a cis double bond like that and we know that we can make a cis double bond from alkyne right away from the alkyne by using the Lindler's catalyst and the hydrogenation on that Lindler's catalyst. So we can accomplish the synthesis in two steps. So my step number one from the starting material is going to be the Lindler's catalyst. So that is going to be palladium that is poisoned by um, lead oxide or barium carbonate. And also we typically see something like quinoline as the addition there. So I'm going to show quinoline there as well. And of course, we are going to have hydrogen as our reducing agent here. And then we are going to do our dihydroxylation. Uh, we can do it with osmium. So we can do, let's say, step number one, osmium oxide, and then do reductive cleavage of the intermediate that we are going to get at that point, which can be accomplished with something like, let's say, sodium hydrogen sulfide or uh, we can use osmium in catalytic quantity, then you're going to be doing osmium with TMO, uh, or you can use potassium permanganate in basic media, so KMNO4 uh, with base at uh, room temperature, etc. There is a million of ways how you can do that. So that would be one a method to accomplishing this synthesis. We can also do a different type of dihydroxylation. So another dihydroxylation that we can do, that going to be a trans dihydroxylation, which is going Going to be a two-step process. So step number one is going to be the MCPBA or regular epoxidation with the uh, peroxy acid and then we are going to open that epoxide in acidic condition with something like H3O plus so aqueous water. So in that case that means that my predecessor would be a trans double bond like that. Well, can we make a trans double bond from the alkyne? We actually can do that as well. In order to partially reduce the alkyne to give us a trans double bond, we are going to use an alkali metal, typically either sodium or lithium, and we are going to do that in liquid ammonia like that. So in other words, there are two different synthetic schemes that you can do here, and both of those are going to accomplish your synthesis. So let's rewrite those in a nice and clean way. In my first method, I used the hydrogen on the Lindlor's, so Lindlor's palladium, and that gave me the corresponding cis alkene. So I would draw my cis alkene like that. Then from here, we did osmium um, oxidation, dihydroxylation. So that was osmium oxide, osmium O4, and then I did the reduction here, NaH. SO3 to give me my final product, which in this case looks like this, and it is exactly the same thing as my final molecule if I rotate that around the um, middle bond like that. The other method that I proposed here was, again, to start with my starting material, with my alkyne, and then we would treat that with sodium in liquid ammonia, so Na and NH3 liquid. That gives us a trans alkene, so my trans alkene would look like this, and after that I'm going to do a two-step process. Step number one, I'm going to use the peroxy acid like MCP. BA or any other peroxy acid, if you like, uh, to make a corresponding epoxide. And then from there, we are going to open up our epoxide with water in acidic media. So I will write that as H2O and H+. And that gives us our final product as well, where I'm going to have one OH group looking at me and another OH looking away from me, just like that. What did you guys think about this synthesis? Did you like it? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Also, if you have any other questions, suggestions or feedback, let me know about those in the comments below as well. Subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates. Watch this video next for more awesome organic chemistry stuff and I will see you tomorrow.